Welcome back, everybody, to another fantastic episode of I'm Gonna Talk About Things and You're Going to Listen. I know I haven't done one of these in a couple of some amount of time, and um, kind of alternate around a lot, doing lots of different things, because I never really know what's going to stick. And if I don't get a lot of feedback, I don't really know what people like and don't like. So I try, I try new things, and you know, if I get, if I get more feedback on those other things, then I do those other things, and I try to try to figure out what's going to work and what's not work. What's what's not going to work? I, um, I know there's like an expectation. Seems like there's always been an expectation on YouTube channels that people are going to always stick with one kind of content. But it's simply not feasible. And this is supposed to be a Bunker Codes podcast. Um, but yeah, I wanted to explain a little bit of that first. Um, some people were confused about my my uh, Mr. Mr. Orb Jorked videos, couple kind of couple messages that people are confused about that, and that was kind of me like experimenting a little bit. Um, everybody tries to grift, and uh, sometimes they grift into crypto content. Sometimes they grift into prepper content or truther BS. And um, it's really silly, right? They go, they go where the traffic is instead of trying to make something, make something new. They just kind of reiterate their own opinion. Uh, and 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 sometimes people like hearing a fresh new opinion. And sometimes it's just the same, the same things people talk about. Earthquakes, space weather, crypto, um, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of different stuff where they talk about aliens or, but I don't, I don't think I've ever tried to really chase any trends. And I think that's important because sometimes when people see things that are new that don't make sense and they don't get it, they immediately get confused and they're not comfortable. Um, and I, I think it's weird because I've actually heard normalcy bias described is that before and i still really don't know i i i disagree with with that phrasing i don't really know what to call it when people don't recognize something and the example i always use is people who have been staring at the ocean their whole life and they don't know ships exist and then all of a sudden they see they see ships. They wouldn't know what that is because they have no frame of reference. It lacks context. And people like things that are familiar with them. The truther community as a whole and the prepper community as a whole really like familiarity. They love the same topics over and over and over. So they can go find people who agree with them. And um, Prepper, Prepper Bunker Outdoors, I know I reference his channel a lot, but he says a lot of things I agree with. And he talks about like the different types of viewers. And he's he often references the types of viewers that are going from channel to channel 
to find people that they agree with instead of finding people that they disagree with. And he says it's really hard to reach new people because the people who disagree with you are, are either going to just argue with you and move on or move on and you're going to get the people who are just looking for echo chambers. And I really do agree with that. Um, and that was one of the, the difficult things I had to overcome with my book, Bunker Codes. And it's something that really that was a real challenge that I had to overcome with my uh, with my channel in general, right? My channel got really big doing auditing videos. And I made more more of those type of videos and nobody wanted to watch them and I made video games and nobody wanted to watch those either and I made kind of different like tutorial videos and people seemed to to resonate with those more and call to action videos when different different people needed help or they needed recognition like people responded to those videos better like and it's weird because I can't make those videos all the time because I don't always know when people need help. And I don't always know who's worth helping or who who's worth not helping or where my heart leads me. And usually the people that need help the most are the ones that like get the least amount of help, it seems like. And a huge chunk of the bunker codes, I'm calling it the, the director's cut, the, the hardbound. I'm adding a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff to it. And I'm adding a lot more like psychology, a lot more religion, And I'm going to be adding a relationship section, which I haven't done yet. The relationship section is going to be one of the next sections I add. Probably one of the last. And I think it's important to read and try to absorb things that you're going to disagree with. Because uh, I was listening to this radio program, and who knows if this is real or not, but it was talking about some guy who is, like, again, supposedly, supposedly he was a gay, um, atheist or something, and he had gotten chased away by the left which is uh, ultra, ultra common. Uh, the reason why conservatives, the conservative side keeps growing and the commies keep going down is because the commies keep chasing people over to the conservative side. And this is something I write about in my books a lot. And like the, the central point around my, my fiction series is really how how so many different identities can work together when they're being all when when they're all on on the chopping block at the same time and he was talking to this guy was talking about it on this radio show and I don't know who it was it just I don't think I ever heard him before he he ran and raved a lot but this thing you know he was talking about is something that I've been saying for years like when people are trying to kill you, you put all of your identities aside. And and so this guy supposedly wrote in, he said, you know, I'm pushed over to the conservative side. I feel welcome right now. But he said, what happens when conservatives go full swing to like 
I forgot exactly how he said it, but it was basically like this religious, like ultra orthodoxy or like ultra ultra conservative values. And then, you know, he was saying, you know, their kind would get wiped out, you know, like the pendulum would just swing the other way. And that's a, a very common fear, although I would say, even though it's a common fear and a valid fear, I think it's an irrational fear. And the reason why I say that is I feel like moderate, and we'll just say Christians, but I feel like this by and large would reflect equally on Muslims to the Muslim faith. They're largely self-policing. I wrote about this somewhere, but honestly I cannot remember where I wrote about this. But they're largely self-policing in the regard that It would take some some really crazy, crazy extreme circumstance that I can't even think of for somehow, we'll say Christianity, but you could say Islam too, so, something that would cause it to just go way, 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 way so far overboard that it turns into this. They're going to start dangling people off of, of off of bridges and stuff, and I'll and I'll explain. So, let's take the most extreme example. Um, I want to say like everyone says Crusades. No, the Crusades were defensive. So let's take like maybe the Spanish Inquisition. Um, pretty crazy. A really unique set of circumstances had to happen to give birth to the Spanish Inquisition. And shame on me, I should actually do more research before I talk about this. But that would be one example. And I do wonder why that wasn't stopped. Or why the just witch hunts in general, which there were tons and tons and tons and tons of witch hunts. Um, there's a whole, I, don't, I can't remember who it was, BBC, I can't remember who it was. They did an amazing podcast series of like every single set of witch hunts because there are tons of them. It's not just one or two or Salem, like witch hunts or pixie hunts or whatever. Pixies? Fae? I don't know. It's been going on for a long time. Um... A real, a real specific set of circumstances has to happen to give rise to uh, that type of power to where like self-policing doesn't work anymore. And even in, so, not that I want to call like the witch hunts Christianity, but We'll, we'll pretend that it's like was like perverted to like the, f the furthest end and cause that. And then we'll like fast forward to like everybody thought like the Taliban was bad and Boko Haram was bad. And, um, and a lot of them were and a lot of them ha hold like really extremist views. And then you have what the. Uh, <laughs> I can't I can't think of like the the non the non shadow band words but the uh, spacing out I'm I'm not spacing out I can't think of the right words but we'll just say we'll say the ISIS caliphate um ISIL whatever um they did things that were like barbaric like fur further than 
Sharia law. Right? They went even beyond that. And there were parts, parts of the uh, Turks that were that just as much as extreme to the, the Kurdish like YPJ and stuff. And so you have these like ultra, ultra, ultra extremist views that even like what we would consider extreme are moderate in comparison, right? So the question is like, you don't like the Taliban because they do horrible things to women if they try to go to school and or like Iran which has the uh the groups that go around and if gals aren't wearing bed sheets they beat the crap out of them to death and stuff. So you have these horrible things, right? Then you realize these horrible things are keeping in check even more horrible things. And it's like so you don't you don't like child brides and stuff and you don't like Sharia law and you don't like um be, them being able to like put fatwas on people that they don't like. You don't like any of those things. But then you realize that they're conservative compared to what's even worse than that. And you realize that even more worse things than that exist. <sighs> But all it takes for those things to exist is for everybody else to do nothing, right? And by and large, they only exist in like tiny, tiny pockets. Like the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst only exist in tiny pockets. And unfortunately, they're usually allowed to exist. And... that's why everybody has to hold each other responsible now like there's level three sex offenders the worst of the worst that are getting let out of prisons every day for the last three years now going on going on our third year of murderers and just the worst kinds of to the worst of the worst they've been letting them out going on three years now because Prison space, running out, prisons cost too much money. And so, and there's all like tons and tons of child trafficking going on in general, not to mention in every, every other problem. And so I can understand saying like, yeah, we could be in trouble someday because women aren't wearing their burkinis and so they get stoned to death or nuns decide to don armor and purge masks and run around town i like it could happen but a ton of things have to happen first before we get there and it would be no different than any other any other group taking over like the furries taking over or cheerleaders taking over like we aren't really just like one bad day away from the christian orthodoxy taking over or isis or mormons or any and i'm not saying these groups are similar i'm just throwing like identity groups out there like flat earthers or football players like we're we're not we're not days away from people in cat suits pointing guns at us saying wear your cat suit or die bigot like we're just not there and i don't think we're ever going to create a world of centrists because I think most people's brains aren't wired that way. But if you have like an open, a, an open like thought society, a society of open thoughts where nobody is pushed into the corner 
and pushed out to the fringe. Um, and, you know, neighbors check in on each other without everything going weird. You can be like, huh, okay, uh, well, uh, sorry, we decided that uh, we're going to have a social contract that child brides are bad. Regardless of which faith or identity you are. Or, or we, we decided that having multiple wives or multiple husbands isn't going to fly, you know. Or we, we've decided that, like, doing horrible things to children uh, because they decided to wear a different color of clothes that day or whatever. You, you can decide as a society what your social contracts are going to be without worrying about the color of people's skin, if they're green or blue or purple, without worrying about what guns or knives people have, or if all of a sudden there's a group that likes to walk around in hockey masks and play play hockey on the roof or whatever people decide they want to go play basketball like you can you can live in a society where everybody leaves everybody alone you don't have to worry about all the basketball players deciding they want to take everything over and force everybody at basketball point to play basketball like you can have a society like that But everybody has to have, like, an open and honest conversation about adhering to everybody being free as long as they don't hurt everybody else. And people might say, what about abortion? Uh, you know, they're always trying to find more things to divide us. And, like, a lot of those things are, are reality. That, that you have to face. So, and apologies, and I've got a cough drop in my mouth so I can keep my throat going, so I can try to keep, keep my thoughts going uninterrupted. But, the problem is everybody has to want to leave each other alone. And, and yes, people... There's going to be people out there that are going to want to do bad things. And, and you might not be able to agree on abortion. Um, that's a hard one to deal with. Because people can't agree on when life actually starts. Which I could do a whole podcast on just that thought experiment. But the reality is... Nobody has a good... The, the problem isn't battle nuns walking around. The problem's not Amazon women dragging off guys into the night or dangling people off towers because you don't like who they're sleeping with. That's not the problem. The problem is like... How do you agree on how to enforce social uh social agreements society like agreements fairly and and then form like a rule of government where you come up with these like social laws even though it's really easy it's just leave everybody alone don't don't screw with people how do you how do you do that, though? And everyone's like, oh, democracy. The problem is, like, if everybody in the U.S. stopped voting but one idiot, technically democracy would still be working. We wouldn't be a constitutional republic. We would just be, there'd be just one idiot voting for everybody in office, and technically it would still be working, even though everyone else would be like, well, blah, blah, blah. 
I'm sure it's fine. And then half of them, even though they don't vote, they go, oh, it's rigged. So this is, happens in a lot of countries that are like quote unquote melting pots. But they, the, but the government doesn't represent them at all and takes them into a an, an extreme direction. It's usually what happens when you have a religious-based leader in charge of the military and some kind of like centrist in charge of the government and the two don't get along and the military one overthrows the, you know, the leader. It happens a lot. So you have to have a a leadership that represents let's let's pretend instead of having uh le, you know Christians Muslims and atheists in a country and they're split 30 30 30 like, how do you form a ruling government? Because people can't just, like, leave each other alone about their religions. You'd have most of the, most of the Christians and most of the Muslims getting along just fine. And the atheists are going to, like start to get annoyed after a while and everyone's going to start getting annoyed at the atheists and so how would you but then all of a sudden it comes to comes to voting time okay and you've got three people running for president you've got an atheist a muslim and a christian all running for president but your Population is split 30 30 30. How, how does everybody decide to vote? And the answer is you have to look at the, you'd have to ignore their identity and vote based off of what they actually think and believe of how humans should be treated. It's going to be really hard because it's not always going to necessarily align. People are going to have to start compromising. And, you know, maybe what you see is the Christians and the Muslims deciding to get rid of the atheists. Because there's more, there's more that they're, those two are going to agree on. They're both going to make compromises, let's say. It would take something like really crazy extreme like that to create an environment where some groups start deciding to wipe out other groups like they have to run out of every other reason to wipe each other out first i guess that's probably like the easy, really easy way of saying it like the human race has so many reasons to want to constantly be wiping itself out right now and none of them are valid uh because they don't actually want to get rid of bad people. Everybody just has some group that they don't like. And they won't admit that there's really nothing wrong with the group. They just decided that they have to not like somebody. And that's who they're not going to like. And meanwhile, bad guys are getting let out of jail and reoffending Instead of just throwing them in a wood chipper in Minecraft. So... It's this lack of pragmatism, common sense, and critical thinking that has led us down this path to constantly being at odds with each other. And I would argue, in a way, that keeps us all safe from any one identity suddenly taking over and all the furries throw on their furry armor and decide to round everybody up in furry FEMA camps and work in the furry fields. Like, 
it's just not feasible. And I would argue even then the furries would start fighting and like the dog furries and the cat furries would start fighting. It, it would just be a mess. It would be a mess. Um, so you're going to have to find ways to get along. Right? You have to find common ground. I've said that over and over and over again. Like, they have the atheists and the Christians and the Muslims, if you, you know, split 30, 30, 30, they would have to find ways of making coalition governments. Or they would have to elect a leader that actually cared about all three and could navigate the best ways for all three to get along. But then part two of that is you have to have Supreme Court justices that care about all three and can make can make rules that work for all three. And instead of atheists, Christians, and Muslims, you could have a, a, a country that was split 50-50 between pro-gunners and anti-gunners and then a group in the middle that doesn't care. How do you do that? How do you elect somebody that's going to care about what a bunch of pro-gunners and a bunch of anti-gunners and a bunch of people in the middle think? You'd think, oh, well, common sense would be that they would just make rules that, you know, we all, so, you know, we agree socially we have a social contract and we're just not going to hurt each other. They won't make that a law. Because that law doesn't keep them in control. They won't go after the fringe people that are actually causing problems because then they won't have any controlled opposition. They have to keep manufacturing problems to stay in power because if they just said, okay, uh, well, everyone's going to just agree to stop hurting everybody else. And, <clears throat> you know, women aren't safe to go out after 6 p.m. anymore, so from now on, we're arming them all to the teeth, and good luck. Sorry, my voice got a tickle. Where was I? Oh, yeah, arm, arm women to the teeth. Yeah, I saw this thing. Where yet yet another flyer where like, you know, gals shouldn't be out after six PM and stuff and I'm like, why why six PM? Like there's so many places where just horrible, horrible, horrible things happen to girls and just children in general in broad daylight, like total impunity, like nobody's nobody has any fear anymore and of, of all the horrible, horrible things that they do. Unspeakable torture of the worst kinds in, in quote-unquote, like, modern civilized countries. And what I don't understand is those those are really the most concerning, urgent things that could develop into a takeover, right? Civil unrest. Or just... I don't know. I don't know what happens to a society after you do, like, just so many unspeakable... Like, they can't bury it forever. They can't bury, like, the outrage of all these horrible things that happen forever. It'll swing the other direction. And unfortunately, when it swings the other direction, any semblance of, like, control, for better or worse, is lost. People do not respond well to seeing their own kind having horrible things done to them. Horrible, 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 horrible things. And I 
I get it now. I didn't get it for a long time. But I do get it now. Like, I understand the outrage. Like, of course, that doesn't mean go, go steal Nikes and stuff. I just mean, like, like, that's how you get, that's how you get lynch mobs. Um, that's how you get race wars. And I feel like, unfortunately, that's been weaponized. And there's a, a lot of sentiment that, like, a lot of these horrible things are allowed to happen. They, they allow communities to be subverted either by letting prisoners out, letting people from one country into another country where they're, like, have diametrically opposed ideals like child brides, or they just completely hate the race of the place they're moving, or they consider them like subhuman degenerates, and they put them together, right? They know. I think they know what's going to happen. And when the absolute, just most unspeakable, unspeakable, horrible things happen, I think they know every time we get to like a race war. And it is hard. It's really hard to see your own, either your own ethnicity, your own religion, your own identity, straight up murdered. It is hard. Watching them get ragdolled. And I get it. Um... What's hard, though, is the fact that it keeps happening on both sides, and nobody's ever able to see why, because we're not, we're not allowed to see why, and that's how extremism is allowed to flourish, because if something's hor if something horrible is happening for long enough, you beg and beg and beg and beg for just somebody to come fix it. And after a while, you don't care how extreme they are anymore. Because people who are conservative centrist are typically in the middle because they want to just sit on the fence and be better than everybody. Or they just want to be left alone. They don't want to involve themselves. And after a while, you end up with one extreme having to fight the other extreme. But what happens every time? What happens every time that's ever happened? The folks in the center eventually get tired of the two extremes fighting. And they wait until the two extremes get weak enough and they wear them down. And law enforcement does the same thing. So it's always these, like, this constant, constant turmoil. So, circling back around the beginning, you know, there's never going to be battle nuns running around. Because whatever the opposite of battle nuns are would immediately start running around too. It's always been that way. I don't think any single identity could ever take over more than a very, very, very small no-go zone. It doesn't matter if it's Iran. It doesn't matter if it's Saudi Arabia or Egypt or Nordstrom's at the mall. Like... China is like the one exception, and it took them a long, 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 long time to get there, but even then, like, 
you can only pen people up for so long. But even then, a lot of the thoughts were that those people were penned up on purpose, knowing that they would eventually lash out, and then use that as even more excuses, i.e. China was out of control with the, uh, with the lockdowns, and they knew the lockdowns weren't working, and they had to blame it on somebody. And so eventually they forced the civil unrest to happen, and then acted like they succumbed to the civil unrest so they could blame the virus outbreak on the dissidents when they knew that their own hospital system, which they indoctrinated everybody to have to use, there's no self-reliance of any medicine at all anymore. And then they all got mad because the hospitals weren't ready, and they said, well, you know, you guys should have obeyed the lockdowns. They kind of created their own little controllable perfect storm. and. I think that's why so many people just see all of this as like a giant simulation. Constantly busy, constantly thrown in a blender, constantly like taxed to the brink of bankruptcy between taxes and healthcare, to the point where nobody can afford a car, a car payment, car parts. I think if you can, it takes forever to get more more car parts. This whole thing just seems like a perfectly manufactured simulation. It seems too perfectly controlled. It doesn't seem organic. Because everything fits like on this nice, neat 24-hour news cycle. The only time it ever seems that something's not organic is if it doesn't fit into their convenient time frame cadence. It doesn't fit into their cadence. And then you're like, oh, this, this might be organic. Like, people might actually be getting upset about this organically. And, um... They, they keep, you know, there keeps being mass mass casualty events over and over and over again and nobody cares anymore so the mass casualty events aren't offending people so they really have two choices do they stop doing the mass casualty events or do they ramp them up and see if even bigger mass casualty events rile everybody up or to some other like environmental accident like shit's all just like way too contrived like have you ever noticed that like there's never a point in time where like something horrible is not happening I mean think about it for a second and I know you could like just turn the TV off and that would help you a little bit, but then, like, things could really sneak up on you. Because sometimes there are really important things that, that can happen. But, like, when was the last time there wasn't something horrible happening? Like, it's just on this really super convenient cadence. What was the last, like, good year you remember where there wasn't some, like, huge dumpster fire? And I don't mean like earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes. Although, to be honest, I don't really remember the last really bad hurricane. It's been a long time. But it is what it is. Like, it's just, it's just weird. It's just like we're, we're in, we're in a blender. And so I'm not worried about Amazon women taking over or ISIS, or the alt-right, uh, the alt-right. Uh, I'm not worried about it. 
you know, I'm not worried about the Mormons taking over or the Catholics or furries, like atheists. I'm not worried about it because we're being thrown in a blender so much. I just can't imagine something happening that could galvanize enough groups together that that could be brought under any single umbrella. Even inside the Muslim faith, there's tons of different factions. Just, I mean, if you just look at like Afghanistan alone, you end up with different tribes and tribal families and different kind of like sub armies that ally and turn on each other over and over and over and it's been going on for a really long time so there's just not they're just short of an alien invasion and i always I always talk about that it's like what's the one thing that could galvanize the whole planet alien invasion that's obviously science fiction but I'm just not worried about it. It'll happen in teeny tiny pockets. Like, communism could, like, totally take over. Just because people are so stupid and lazy. But, even within communism, you're gonna have... You're not gonna have a lot of hardliners. And yeah, when people starve, there's gonna be more and more and more people begging for you know, aid relief and social credit scores and Fed coin. Like, yeah, if China buys all of our houses, there's going to be people begging the government to fix it by any means. But the second they have a roof over their head and food again, they're going to immediately go back to what they know. So even if they're in a big tent city, they're all still going to go over to their little corners. Just like prison. Just like everybody does. Because it's tribalism, right? All the furries are going to go back to the furry corner. And all the hockey players are going to go to the hockey corner. And the basketball players and the hockey players aren't going to get along. And the football players and the soccer players are going to not get along. And it's going to turn right back into tribalism. So I'm just really not worried about it. I'm more focused on how do we get along? How how do we not push each other's buttons? How do we not drive each other crazy? You know, and I think that's what we need to focus on. How do we not drive each other crazy? How do we get more tolerant and more patient? You know, how how do we build up our our resilience to people's annoying little ticks that that aren't really hurting anybody but they just get on our nerves and the answer is we need more space we need to be not smushed together and we need to be around people that we like to be around that we can handle being around and not focused on identity which means if you want to live next to a, a witch doctor and a plague doctor and a medicine man and somebody who likes a pogo stick, but you know, you can talk them into only pogo sticking during certain hours. So they're not pogo sticking in the middle of the night when you're trying to sleep. You know, you can make make a community that that you like that you like to be around and as long as everybody leaves each other alone it's fine and that's what my books are about and hopefully maybe someday you find a relationship with somebody that you like and you can share some of your heart with them and not take them for granted and build a family of your own and raise that family with the same ideals and 
Teach everybody conflict resolution. You know, like... So what I would have said to the... The guy who said he was gay and an atheist and stuff, I would say... Don't worry about... Battle nuns taking over and hanging you from a bridge someday. Like... Don't worry about your identity at all. Just try to make your own little tribe and do your best. And that's that's what we all just try to do, right? And so I know my little videos were weird with Mr. Orb Jorked and Comrade Sandimus and North Karoa defending our our planet with preemptive rockets into space but like you're going to run into people that you don't understand or you're going to run into people who are who who make jokes when they're nervous and when bad things are going on and people are going to make jokes that you don't like people are going to say things that you, that you don't like they may even do things that you disagree with but you have to try to figure out, like, critically, what types of people that you can live with, considering there's much, 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 much worse out there, and you have to find people you can trust. And, full well knowing, there's people trying to actively divide all of you. So, my voice is given out, and... My cough drops aren't doing anything to keep my voice going, so I hope I hope this made sense. A lot of this is going into my bunker book, um, hardbound, but some of this is just way easier to explain over podcast form. So I'm sorry for those of you that were confused. About my silly Mr. Orb Jork videos. That's. That was how I was coping with all the balloons and all the craziness. And I was going to make another one where they could see, like, the space cloud and the space cloud is moving around. But truth be told, there's a lot of people suffering in Ohio right now. And I joked about the balloons because they weren't really hurting anybody. It could have been scary, it could have been bad, but at the end of the day, they didn't hurt anybody, so I felt okay joking about it. Uh, I didn't feel okay joking about COVID, and I don't feel okay joking about the the horrible poisonous clouds. I That doesn't sit right with me unleashing these horrible poisonous clouds on cities. I feel like as a society, there's some things that we should be able to to rally around. And there just isn't a national outcry for all the poor people and the livestock and the fish. And so, we have to really stick together. And try to find reasons to... To stick together, so we don't uh, we don't get divided. And my voice is going out, so I appreciate you all. And if you actually like these podcasts, let me know, and I'll make more. If there's more topics you want me to talk about, bunker bunker wise, prepper wise, let me know. And for for a limited time. If you leave your name in a comment, I will put you in the back of my hardbound bunker code book. I'm making this part called Time Capsule. So if you bought my book and like my book, uh, leave your name and a short little note, and I'll put it in the Time Capsule section at the end of my bunker codes book. The, uh, the hard the hardbound so 
It's going to be getting published here in a couple weeks. So you've got a couple weeks. So appreciate you all and take care and buy my books. Bye bye.